In a dark and damp jail cell, the light barely flickering. Bill McCoy sat, thinking about his life choices and how he got there. Once, he was at the top of the rum running business, and now he sat in a cell, alone. Look at that scum. Good God, I tell you. People call me a monster for breaking the law. Meanwhile, I was just trying to provide for my family. Anyone would understand. Well, a criminal's a criminal in the system a lot. We're breaking the law. People never care why we did it, just what we did wrong. All I'm asking for is an ear. The ban on alcohol has been ruinous for America. It's brought us up to this point. I just want my story to be told. Let's hear it, Bucko. Why would a scum like you be any similar to us hardworking people? It all started when I was a little boy in Syracuse, New York. I really didn't stay there much when I was young. I was five years older than my little sister, Violet, and Ben, my brother, was five years older than me. Our mother wasn't in the picture. It was just us kids and our father. We went down south in Jacksonville where we were raised. As I grew up, I was always attracted to the water and boats. My father taught me the ropes about working with boats. I built my first boat at the age of 12. I really was just a hands-on guy, especially with the water. What, what does that, that have anything to do, do with you rum running? I'm getting there. I ended up starting my boat building company and freight transport business with my brother Ben, where we provided freight and passenger transport between Daytona, St. Augustine, and Palm Beach. In those times, I was able to provide for me and my family, all before Prohibition. But then the economy went bad and my business went belly up. I was forced to start taking shipments and becoming the king of Rum Row. We see a warehouse on a dock. It had been quite some time since this boat was completed. The year was 1920, and the Volkstead Act was finally in effect. Alcohol was now prohibited all across America. Bill had heard rumors of the underground, movements of illegally produced alcohol. He heard of people purchasing alcohol from foreign countries and illegally shipping it to the States. We see McCoy looking at a boat for his new purchase. You know, this would be the perfect investment opportunity. This would really give me back in business. I'm only doing business with this, sir. Likewise. Don't worry, we'll take care of this beautiful establishment you've got over here. Thank you, Val. It's time to get to work. Tonight, all our viewers get to see a once-in-a-lifetime shot. We're alongside the one and only Bill McCoy as he shows us how he's so successful at selling his famous Bahamian rum to thirsty people here in Atlantic City. Mr. McCoy, show us how it's done. All right, y'all, what we're doing here is our strategy called Rum Row. Basically what we're doing is we sailed out, got from a big old ship, picked up a bunch of alcohol, and we're sailing back into a big old thing we call Rum Channel, where we're preventing and selling alcohol throughout the land. Now, we gotta be real dead quiet for this part, so everybody let's quiet down, all right? Big boss, the coast thief, the coast thief, everybody hit the jack! All right, y'all, let's move in real quiet. Here we go, sir. Genuine Caribbean rum. What? It's another day's work. Hey, boss. Ain't it about time to head back? Yeah, let's get going. Woo! Mr. McCoy, that was one wild ride. Does this often happen to you, rum runners? Well, not quite so often. You got yourself a real good scene there, but you don't become the best rum runners in the Atlantic without a few tight scrapes, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> McCoy himself was never averse to using his newfound wealth to party with the richest people in the dead of night, far from where the authorities would be. McCoy wanted it well known that he was the best rum runner on the Atlantic coast, and he stacked huge cases of rum to prove it. But for McCoy, these parties weren't just about boozing it up. He was often making key partnerships. Now, here's 500 in a bottle of finest term from Nassau. I sure that sick acid, correct? Although his new business was a success, it wouldn't come to last. On one of his business outings, he had noticed the ship of the U.S. Coast Guard. This time, he wouldn't be so lucky to hide or to bribe his way out of the law. Oh no! The Coast Guard! Well, flip my dip, we're freaked. Jasper, Bobby, I want the rudder up. The main sail at 8 o'clock a week ago, I want 10 knots stacked. Bill McCoy, step out of the boat right now with your hands up. Bill McCoy was taken to court and in 1921 was sentenced to two years in jail. He served his sentence and was released in 1923. 
He never went back to rum running, but the consequences were widespread, including the popularization of rum smuggling that it affects on American history. McCoy's impact on American history is often overlooked but cannot be understated. A true turning point in history, McCoy was the first to create a structured system of alcohol distribution through bootlegging. Many bootleggers followed in his wake throughout Prohibition, and it was key to ending the restrictive 18th Amendment. Paired with gang warfare, introducing the likes of gang bosses such as Al Capone, Prohibition ended in 1933. Just as the Great Depression ravaged world economies, the alcohol production and distribution industry provided a key source of income for the U.S. economy. Despite being a single person with a single operation, McCoy set into motion a chain of events that could not be undone, and changed the perception of Prohibition forever.